Good morning, boys and girls. It is so good to see you. And I just want to welcome you here. This is the three-year-old classroom. So for those of you who have been in this three-year-old classroom are going to be, this is what it is. And we can't wait to have you back with us. Well, let's start off our morning like we always do with our prayers, okay? And remember, we have our four types of prayers, our I love you prayers, our thankful prayers, our I'm sorry prayers, and our please prayers, okay? This morning, let's talk to our loving Father and let's say some please prayers, prayers of supplication, asking him for things, okay? So let's bow our heads. Oh, first of all, what do we need, boys and girls? That's right, we need our bears, don't we? I'm gonna count backwards from 10, you run and get yours, and then meet me right back here, okay? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All right, welcome back. Let's hold them close. Miss Amy will start and you can finish, okay? Bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear God, we just love you so much. And Jesus, we thank you so much for this day. And Father, we love you so much. And will you please help us this week to do our best to follow you, Lord. Amen. All right, let's put our bears away. Now, if you remember, we've been talking about Joseph, haven't we? And we've been talking about how Joseph was with his family, right? And we've learned that he was one of Jacob's sons. He was one of Jacob's favorite. He was Jacob's favorite, wasn't he? And that made his brothers jealous. And so his jealous brothers took him and sold him to some people going to Egypt, didn't they? And Joseph came to Egypt. And last week we saw how God took Joseph and he placed him in the palace with the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, right? Now, do you remember... What did Pharaoh dream? Pharaoh had a dream last week. Do you remember that dream? That's right. Pharaoh's dream was where God warned Pharaoh in his dream. He warned him of fat cows and skinny cows and uh, lots of corn growing and then some dried up corn, right? And the Pharaoh didn't know what this was about. And he asked some men to come and tell him and they couldn't tell him, but Joseph could get, didn't he? God helped Joseph tell Pharaoh exactly what that dream meant, didn't he? And Joseph told Pharaoh what the dreams meant, and the Pharaoh listened to Joseph, didn't he? And then what did he do, boys and girls? Do you remember? That's right. He made Joseph in charge of all of Egypt, didn't he? And he made him a powerful ruler over Egypt. And Joseph was put in charge of collecting grain while it was happening during this time of um, growth and when there was lots of good farming and the grain was growing and all and the cattle were healthy. And then when the famine came, right, when there was nothing growing, he took all of that and had it stored up, okay? And because all of that was stored up, there were lots of people in Egypt who needed food because during this time of famine, okay, when the cows were skinny and the grain was not growing and they had nothing to eat, lots of people from Egypt, um, around Egypt, would come to Egypt where Joseph was and buy this grain, okay? Now, let me ask you, do you know what grain is? Well, grain is a small, hard seeds from plants, okay? It's like wheat or corn or oats or rice, and it's used in cereal, or it can be ground into flour to make our bread. It's an important food for people all around the world. I bet you eat it every day, maybe with a sandwich, or maybe you have rice as a side. And we use grains in lots of different kinds of food, right? Now, how many of you like to eat oatmeal? I know I do. What about rice? See, I've got some rice right here. Do you like to eat rice? All right, what about bread? Okay, and most of all, boys and girls, even better, what about popcorn? 
Oh, yummy, yummy buttered popcorn. Well, these are things that are made from grains, and I brought those this morning to kind of show you some of these things. Well, the famine that we were talking about, this was a very bad famine, and it made nothing grow. So they didn't have the rice growing in their homes, and they didn't have corn, and they didn't have things like that to eat in their homes. So they came to Egypt, where Joseph was, in order to buy this grain. And the Bible tells us that even people in Canaan, now do you remember that place? Canaan is where Joseph's family and his father lived, and they didn't have food either. So Joseph's father told 10 of his brothers to go to Egypt to get some food, okay, and to buy grain. Let's read in Genesis chapter 42, starting in verse 6, and let's see what happened, okay? Now Joseph was governor over all the land, and it was he who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came, and they bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Oh, boys and girls, do you remember from a couple of weeks ago when we studied that that's exactly what Joseph said was going to happen? Do you remember when Joseph had the dreams? And you see here, he had the dreams about the wheat, and he told his brothers about that, and that made them mad. And then he told them about the stars and the moon and the sun bowing down to him, and that made them mad, didn't it? And this is exactly what was happening here. His brothers, who were so mad at their little brother and never thought they would bow down to him, let me read it to you again. Here's what's happening. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed down before him with their faces to the earth. Well, Joseph saw his brothers and he recognized them, but he acted as a stranger to them and he spoke roughly to them. And then he said to them, where did you come from? And they said, from the land of Canaan to buy food. So, Joseph recognized his brothers, but they did not recognize him, okay? Joseph didn't tell his brothers who he was. He decided to test them to see if they were still as mean as they used to be, okay? So first, Joseph turned to them and he shouted at them, oh, you are spies. Now, did he really think they were spies? No, he was just testing them but he wasn't finished testing them from there. Can you guess what Joseph did next to his brothers? He put them all in jail for three days. And when he let them out, he gave them grain and he gave them some, um, and gave them and put it in a bag and he sent them home to their families. But he kept Simon there and said that if they wanted to get Simon out of prison, then they had to go and get their youngest brother and bring that youngest brother, who was Benjamin, if you remember, and had to bring Benjamin back with him. Oh no, the brothers were worried and they were afraid. They knew how much their dad, Jacob, loved Benjamin and, and they didn't want anything to happen to Benjamin since something had happened to Joseph. And they sure didn't want to have to leave Simon, so they were really kind of worried and afraid of what was going to happen. Well, after they got home and they ate up all their grain that they got from Egypt, the brothers went back for more, and this time they took their youngest brother, Benjamin, with them, okay? And the brothers went back, and Joseph let Simon out of prison, just like he said, but the brothers still didn't know that this ruler really was Joseph, their brother, that they had sold to Egypt. And when it was time for them to go back to Canaan, Joseph told his servant to fill up their sacks with grain for them, but he also told the servant to put his silver cup, which was very precious, into Benjamin's bag. He was testing these brothers again. He wanted to see if they were still mean and would treat Benjamin the way that they treated him. So after the brothers left for home, Joseph told his servant to run after them, okay? And see here he's putting the cup in, and he told his servant to run after them and to find out which one had stolen the silver cup. Well, when the servant caught up with them, he searched all the brothers' sacks and he found the cup. Do you remember whose bag it was put in? That's right, he had put it in Benjamin's bag. 
uh-oh, it looked like Benjamin stole the silver cup. And now he would have to go back and be put in big trouble and probably put in jail again. But remember, boys and girls, Joseph knew his brothers had not cared about him many years ago. And he wanted to test them to see if they would act the same way with Benjamin. So what do you think they would do? Do you think they would let Benjamin just leave and just leave him there with them and just kind of go on back home and let him be in trouble? Well, the Bible says that they all went back to Egypt and they helped Benjamin. And Joseph's brothers had passed the test. Whew, isn't that good, boys and girls? Well, Joseph could see that his brothers had really changed. So it was finally time to let them know who he was. And he stood before them and he said, I am Joseph, your brother whom you sold into Egypt. <gasps> Joseph's brothers, they were shocked and they were afraid too. And when they saw that this powerful Egyptian brother, ruler, was really their brother. And they knew they had done terrible things to Joseph and they were very, very sorry. And now that he could do whatever he wanted to them, he could do whatever he wanted to get back at them, couldn't he? But you know what? God had changed these brothers and Joseph could see that. And Joseph had helped, and God had helped Joseph during all of this, didn't he? God had a plan, remember? We talked about that, how God had a plan for Joseph to become this ruler and for good things to happen to him. And so Joseph stood before his brothers and he planned everything out perfectly and he was in control the whole time by God, right? God was in control. He was in control of Joseph. He was in control of what was happening here. And even when people were doing evil things like these brothers did to Joseph, God can turn those things around, right, and do good. And Joseph could see that now these brothers wanted to do what was right and what was good. And God had changed them. And Joseph understood this and knew that it was his job to trust God and to forgive his brothers. Boys and girls, it's, it's very important that we remember God is in control of everything, just like he has been throughout all this time with Joseph and his family. And God wants to work all things out for good. We just have to trust him like Joseph did and allow him to be in control. And boys and girls, when someone hurts us, as hard as it may hurt, boys and girls, we need to forgive them because that is what God wants us to do. Just like Joseph did his brothers, he forgave them. So boys and girls, I encourage you this week to just remember to allow God to be in control and trust him with everything because he loves you very much. Have a great week, boys and girls, and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. Bye.